Hey guys, it's Jason with GP Woodworks. Uh, I ran into some issues with the cutting board I posted on uh, Facebook as my video this time around. So I've done something else. I'm at almost like 40 views now. So, and I'm sure eight of those are me. <laughs> so, uh, uh, so yeah, the 32 of you that have watched my video, uh, hopefully I'm running them fast enough for you. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so uh, please subscribe if you see this. Um, I also have a Facebook page called GP Woodworks. You can find me there. So give me a like there and uh, help me get a little bit more FaceTime on the interwebs. That would be awesome. Uh, yeah, I'm going to quit rambling now and uh, I'm going to let you watch the video. This is two screwdriver handles that I've made. They're a little different. See, this one's all fat and stuff. I didn't like the way that one turned out. But both of them are three-sided. So you can barely see it in the picture. You can kind of see the shadow lines that the light's casting on it. But it makes them nice to grip in your hands. So this one right here, I tried a different way, and it came out so big. I mean, it's kind of nice when I'm really torquing, but... I just don't like the way it looks. I want it to look more like this one right here. So that's what I'm shooting for. I've got my protractor here set for 60 degrees. up your zero point at the center of that hole. We'll mark a half inch right here. Now I gotta mark this one and that one. We're not marking all of them, we're marking every other one. Alright so we're gonna go ahead and mark our centers here. Once we go off center and we start turning these facets onto this handle, we run a risk of running too close to this edge right here and it blowing out. So I've had that happen. This is why I went through all this extra trouble. So I'm basically just going to eyeball what I think is enough. And I'll lay that out one to one. That'll give us a way to tell when we need to stop. And so that's going to be the shape of our handle. all round. Now, we'll just pick a hole. I can see the camera shaking, so I'm going to have to reset this.
gonna use this end of it as the end for the uh, where we're gonna put the shaft in. And we're gonna make this five inches long. All right, so piece of copper tubing, about a half inch long, maybe a little more. This interior diameter, usually turn it a couple times. So I'm getting 0.550 49 ish that area. So if I do a tenon 0.55, I should be all right. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to start tapering from about here down to flush with this ferrule. Alright, since I'm not turning off center, this should stay pretty stable. So, for all my tool handles, whether it's a mallet, which I've turned tons of, or a screwdriver handle, or a chisel handle, whatever, I always use beeswax. Now I have burned myself doing this. This will raise a blister in a heartbeat. So getting into here, just gotta be careful. All right. So the camera shut down. It ran out of memory. So I just spent the last few minutes deleting videos so this is the way they turned out this was the one that I liked and was trying to match and I got close it's not dead on perfect but it's pretty close um, but I like it 